What is going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today's gonna be a really cool day. We're heading over to AEO Power Sports to pick up my new bike. I've wanted one of these since they came out. I sat on one in 2016 when they first came out and I've wanted one ever since. Finally in a position where I'm able to do that. Just a little bit of background. I bought my first Supermoto 2017 and it was an absolutely great bike. One of my favorite bikes I've ever owned is a 2007 KTM 525. I put a ton of hard hours on that thing and absolutely loved it, but it ended up having to sell it. And then the following year, I tried to get back into Supermotos and bought a WR450. My last Supermoto just kind of put a bad taste in my mouth for Supermotos and just was not fun. I bought it for, I want to say $4,000, and then on the very, very first ride, it blew the bottom end, and I ended up having to sell it for, I think I sold it for around $1,500 with a blown engine. So I lost. $2,500 in a day on that bike. I was not fun and only got to ride it once and then it exploded. So after that, I kind of just had a bad taste in my mouth for used supermotos and things like that. My KTM, I beat the crap out of for like close to a hundred hours with no problems. It just depends on who's owned it. So I didn't want to really take a risk with buying a $10,000 dirt bike, even 500 miles on it, because you don't know who's owned it for that 500 miles and if it's gonna start having oil consumption or something early on like that. I would rather just pay the extra money to know that I broke in the bike and it's, if something goes wrong, it's because of what I did, not someone else. That just kind of put a bad taste in my mouth for used Supermotos. When I was looking for this bike, I was looking at used ones and stuff like that, but they, they just changed a bunch of things in the 2020. They added rider modes, quick shifter, and some things like that. So I was debating trying to get a used one, but even the used ones were still $9,500 for a cheap one, and it had 8,000 miles on it already. So it's might as well just spend an extra couple thousand dollars and get a brand new 2020 with the quick shifter, with the modes and all that type of stuff. When I started looking to get a Supermoto, there aren't really that many options for California because they're extremely strict with their rules here. Like you can't have a, um, a two stroke is nearly impossible to get street legal here. You basically have to register it out of state if you're gonna get a two stroke compared to Colorado or Wyoming or places like that. Supra. But basically like in, in places like Wyoming, Arizona, places like that, it's much easier to register a dirt bike that's not designed to be street legal into a supermoto. But California, they have to have a certain sticker to get them street legal here. So it's a pain to try to get a bike that's not a street legal bike into a street legal bike. So you can't just go buy like an old YZF450 and make it street legal here. It just doesn't, it's nearly impossible. So I started looking at newer bikes like the KTM Husqvarna's and a lot of the stuff that was available that was used was eight, nine thousand dollars with a hundred hours on it or eighty or eight thousand miles. And the, the reason I'm going with the Supermoto setup compared to the Enduro setup, I just wanted, I know you can Supermoto convert the Enduros a lot easier than you can Enduro convert the Supermotos, but to me it's, I just wanted a out of the box Supermoto, go ride, go have fun and not have to put an extra couple thousand into it to be able to get a supermoto out of the box. There we are. I'm sorry if the audio gets muted, but I'm in California and I'm pretty sure it's illegal to, in my county, to not wear a mask when you're so gonna have to have wear my mask while we're in the store so hopefully that doesn't affect the audio I think this is one of the fender eliminator kits that looks pretty clean yes, is this a 690 yeah here's a 2020 690 Yeah, the 701 feels better. Oh, no, they're pretty, the 701 is the seat that like wraps right there. Yeah, the 701 definitely feels better. Yeah, the Enduros feel like the same thing. Yeah, probably softer suspension. Wow. 450 looks sweet. Definitely not street legal though. Oh my god. 
It's not tall at all. I can flat foot it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the seat's definitely hard. <laughs> oh my god. It's missing the mirrors. I wonder if that. Wow. That feels amazing. Wow. See how, see how low it is? It is not a super tall bike. <laughs> Doesn't that just feel unbelievable? It feels good. It's so light. <laughs> like, look at how just like. That thing is so sick. Alrighty, she's all loaded up, we're heading home. The guys at AEO were super cool. Super good experience buying a bike. I've never bought a new bike before, but that, that definitely is about as smooth as it could go. I feel like I think I was maybe like, maybe an hour. They had it all ready to go. They had it all ready to go get in there and then just sign papers and take it home. I was I was really expecting the 701 to be a much taller bike. I haven't sat on one in a while, and I was expecting it to be a much taller bike than it. I think the Enduros are a little bit taller because I mean it. I could flat foot it pretty easily. It, it's a small, small, super light bike. I cannot wait to ride that thing. I cannot even express how nice it is to have a new bike. Comes with two keys. Comes with the bag. Comes with tools. Comes with a warranty. Every my newest bike I've ever owned is a 2007 that was carbureted for um for dirt bikes, and it just it is so cool to have a new bike. It has traction control, it has a quick shifter, it has lean lean sensing ABS. It's gonna be so cool to go ride it and so much safer, honestly, than than the old bikes. It's nice too that it came with the, um, it came with nice Continental tires. The super, it's, those tires are actually designed for super motos, which is a lot of times new bikes come with crap tires. So that's really cool that it out of the box comes ready to ride. I was also surprised the bike came with um, the bike came with all those stuff for a passenger, so that's cool. It's my old bike, the KTM, no way were you getting a passenger on that thing, but this bike you can do a passenger if you want to, so that'll be really cool. I'm gonna be making a video breaking down how much I paid and all that type of stuff, buying a new bike versus used bike, and I'm actually pretty surprised with how cheap it was for a new bike. It, the used bikes for sale were almost the same price as what I paid for that, so it just definitely find a good shop AEO, somebody that's gonna hook it up with a good deal and that buying that bike is way better than buying one of the used ones and it's a 2020. I did not get one of the old models. Because I did buy this bike brand new with zero miles on it, I am gonna, I probably won't get any riding clips in this video because I wanna make sure I do a proper break in the correct way to make sure I don't end up damaging the engine and ruining the life of the motor. Busa. I'm gonna put a video out on my break-in process. I talked to the guys at AEO about it and kind of have an idea for how I want to do it. And I'm, but that'll be the next video coming out. And then I'll definitely be showing you guys some clips of actually riding this thing, how it's designed to be ridden. I was super excited to get this bike, but after seeing it in person, this thing is just unbelievable. I, I couldn't even couldn't even imagine in my head how amazing that bike feels and looks. It is just, it, it feels like it's, it feels like the TTR in weight. It feels super light and nimble and small to the ground, but it's got a 700cc engine. It's gonna be a monster, I cannot wait. It's also important, the reason I'm not riding it home also is it's also important, it's a brand new bike to me. I've never ridden it before. Tires are brand new, they're not scrubbed in yet. Brakes are brand new. Everything on the bike is brand new, so that's everything needs to be broken in in a calm, controlled environment 
and not riding it home through traffic with lights and stuff like that. So it just, no reason to not trailer at home and then do a proper break-in procedure in a controlled environment. Another thing that actually blew me away about this bike, because con considering how expensive it was, the um, and full coverage insurance on this bike was $10 more a month than liability on my Honda Blackbird. The the Honda Blackbird was a 1999 worth like two to three thousand dollars, and I liability insurance on that was ten dollars cheaper than full coverage for this bike with medical payments and like I mean the full full coverage everything insurance was ten dollars more than bare minimum insurance for my Blackbird, which is just crazy. I think it's most likely because of the um, it's most likely because of ABS and it's a dirt bike, so if you if even if you wreck these bikes and flip them and slide them out and stuff like that, they're really not going to do too much damage compared to the Blackbird. That thing is a big, heavy bike that could do some serious damage if it hit a car and it had no traction control and was a 1133 cc. So that, that kind of makes sense, I guess. But still, for the the value, the price difference value, I think full coverage insurance on the Blackbird was like a couple hundred dollars a month. The full coverage insurance on this bike is $45 a month, which is just insane. But I also have a um, I also have a clean driving record as of now. We'll see how long that stays with this bike, but but I think that's definitely helping the clean driving record. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Looks crazy, huh? Beginning of the next chapter. Mm -hmm. Chester and the Oh my god, so light. This is such a good looking bike. And so like, this is what I was telling you about the um, tires. Comes with these stock, the Conti attacks. That's a super nice tire. I'm glad they come with that. Come, the keys are pretty sick too. Comes with. Oof. Has all the modes right here. One, two, traction control, ABS. You sat on it and it's. Yeah, it's super comfy. The only thing I'd like to, this exhaust is massive. That's definitely one thing that's gotta go. But Acropovic exhaust for this thing are like $1,000. Massive. Got the Brembos. Stock Brembos. Adjustable WP suspension. Look at that dinner plate too on the front. That is insane. It came with like some decal stickers to have to throw on. The rear brake's pretty big from factory too. That's, this is definitely got to go. The fender's massive in the blinkers. I'll have to look at California law and see if you have to have a blinker on it. Because I know Colorado you could just use your hand signals, but we'll have to see. Thanks for tuning in to come watch me pick up the new bike. I appreciate everybody supporting the channel. Big things are coming. I'm going to be cranking out content with this bike. Let me know down in the comment section some of the stuff you guys want to see with this thing. I know this is the 2020, so there's a lot of stuff different with it. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff like comparing the 19 models and stuff. That'll be cool to see. Hopefully going to get up the breaking it in video within the next couple of days. And then we'll be getting some real riding clips in. Can't wait to ride this thing.